I'm Detective Sergeant from the Sheriff's Office. I'm one of the guys working this case way back when. Okay, I'm all with him. Um, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to sit down and talk to you. Just give me okay? Do you need any water? Would you like any water? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Yeah, okay, yeah, why don't we? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we'll do that now. Um, if you want water or anything after that. Give me a little water. Okay, you let me know. Uh, can you take care of the rest of the food? Oh, this blanket is not That's fine. I have the right to stay silent. I know that. Okay. You know, but I, I, if I want to talk, it doesn't 
bother me to talk to you. Okay, great. And we're going to get to that. You do understand. There's one more question. You do understand that when you get arraigned, you know what your arraignment is when you actually get formally, that you go see the judge about the charge you've been charged with murder? Yes. They're going to assign you a lawyer. And you're willing to talk to me now without that lawyer around? No, Okay, wonderful. I will tell you, Chris, I haven't told him everything that we talked about. Yeah, because you haven't had the, chop, the time. Right. <laughs> it was yeah. very short. That, that was a, that was an eight-hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> we a lot of time there. So, and I haven't told you 10% of the time. This is the paperwork that I told you. Remember when Tony and I were in the plane talking to you, and we said that we would have, there were some things that we had to do that we couldn't ask you questions? It is. So this is the paperwork that has to be done before we can ask any of those follow-up questions. Yes. Okay. Again, you'll see this is much different than how they do things down there. Everything is, yeah. 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 Every, everything is out in the open and above board, yeah. and nobody here is trying to trick you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the one thing we need to make sure of that. We are not here to trick you, okay? We are here to make sure, you know, I don't know, again, I'm not, I'm kind of interested to learn how things are in Brazil, but we don't. Ask me any questions. We're gonna believe me. I'm gonna ask you so many questions that you're gonna be tired of me by the time. No, no, I, I, <laughs> I, I will tell you this from the, time, from the time that we spent together. It's very important to her. Correct me if I'm misstating this. That you fill in the blanks because she was reading a lot of things in the news and seeing the things that were reported, and she wants to fill in those blanks with things that weren't correct. Is that fair? Is that kind of all this thing starting? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. How about we do this? For, can you read right English language? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is, these are your constitutional rights under Miranda, okay? This section right here, put those on, please. This section right here, we're here to hear, those are your constitutional rights. And what I'll do is I'll read those to you, and I'll ask that you follow along. Sure. You'll see at the end of each sentence, there's a blank space. What I want you to do is put your initials there if you understand it. Absolutely. If you don't understand it, ask me, and I'll be more than happy Absolutely. to explain it. Sure. Once we get through that, when we get down here, this paragraph is called the waiver of rights. And, and again, I'll read that. And what that basically says is that you understand what your rights are, you're willing to wait for this time to talk. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here you take this pen and follow along with it. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. If that's true, and you there. You have the right to remain silent, but you already told me you knew. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to, talk to a lawyer for advice before you ask you any questions and to have them with you during questioning. You weigh that as though you I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Um, if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If that's true, then you'll hear If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Now, this is the waiver of rights. I have read, or have had read to me, the statement of my constitutional rights, and I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. I therefore waive my rights and agree to make a statement. If that is true, please sign there. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I cannot, I will not have a lawyer. You know, you will. Basically, this just means you'll talk to us right now without a lawyer press. Sure. You will get a lawyer assigned to you if you cannot afford one. Absolutely. And that will probably happen as soon as tomorrow. You got to sign that too. Yourself. Sure. Okay, and then what we'll do is, uh, you know, I'll ask you your, your date of 
for you know that kind of stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get into what happened 11 years ago. Okay. Okay. It's been a long, long time. Okay. Today's date is Wednesday, January 17, 2018, the time at 9.36 p.m. Speaking to Detective Sergeant Mike Dinucci with the Trumbo County Sheriff's Office. We are currently in the investigative division of the Sheriff's Office. Um, also present in the room um, from the U.S. Marshal's Office, um, Bill Bolden. Bill, for voice recognition purposes, please state your name. Uh, my name is Bill Bolden. I'm a senior inspector with the U.S. Marshals. Great, thank you. And we are sitting here with, please state your name. Claudia Christina Corrig. Claudia Christina Corrig. Now, Claudia, you are here. Chris. Chris. She likes this. I'm going to call you Chris. You are here right now. Um, you've been charged, what, almost 11 years ago, you were charged here uh, with, with the murder of your husband. His name was Carl here. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, now. In the meantime, you, you just now came back on a plane from Brazil. Is that, is yes, that true? that's true. Okay. Um, now, where you were living in Brazil, do you have an address down there where you were living? Yeah. What would what, what the address? CLSW 504 um, um, Block A, apartment 45, the name of the Sudoeste, and Because I didn't want his family, which were very 
good people to know the real person that he was. Because I like those people, they're, they're very good people. I and they don't know everything about that man. I understand. Here, here's what I'll tell you about that. And if I tell you, oh yeah, this is what I, I did, this, 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 but I don't tell you what led him to this. That's my concern. He don't tell you everything. Right. You know, okay. it, so, it's, um, you're still confused about it. Chris, here's what I'll tell you. The stage is yours. You, you tell me, tell us whatever you want to tell us. Okay, we, we're not going to control or put words in your mouth. Whatever you feel comfortable no, telling us. You heard, you heard my stories. About, I was emotional when I told you right. the stories. I don't completely remember um, what parts uh, um, in the sequence in which I told these right. things. Would it help? Um, if you, you could help me. Would it help you if I ask you some of the yes. questions based yeah. on what we talked yes, about yes, earlier? Yes, yes, yes. You can help me. And we can start, can help me. And we can start with the yes. that. Yes. Because, see, one thing is for me to talk the way I talk about you were more relaxed. Yeah, I'm not so relaxed. I so my memory it's, shuts down. It's a little scary. It doesn't. It's, it a, doesn't, little, it's, it's a little scary. Because I'm, I feel like I'm under on the pressure to explain things. I didn't feel that way on the plane. Right. And, and, and um, you're not. And you're not going to be under any pressure. I'm not going to talk right. to you any differently now. It's than very hard not to feel under pressure. But, it, but it, it's scary. Only because. Uh, I feel like I, if I only get the chance to say this much, uh, and I don't say the whole thing, I'm going to incriminate myself, make myself look like a terrible person, well, and I'm not going to say why. I will, I will. And the why is Important. that part. It's, it's that part that I said that I didn't want to say to protect and the family from knowing Okay. It's very hard for a parent to know they have children, to know bad things about your child, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to hurt that family, yeah. you know, they, they hurt it, they already lost their uh, son, and I don't want them to know certain parts of their son's uh, uh, personality, uh, because I can bring him back. I, I will not, um, I feel uh, it will not change the outcome of my, uh, of this case. I, I, I'm certain that uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to get, uh, what's the word, um, convicted. I'm prepared for that. And to me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. I feel I'm 53, but I don't feel like 53. I feel like 103. So to me, you know, what a 103-year-old has, uh, has uh, uh, expectations of doing what with the life. You know, I, 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 so. Just go ahead, help me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to help you here a little bit because. Yes, help me because. Remember when we were talking all over the place. When we were talking on the plane, we, you know, Tony and I both said that we would not lie to you. We, we had a big conversation. Yes. And we, you know, we did tell you that the things that you said to us, we can't keep secret. You know what I mean? We have to report what was said. So really all I would like to do right now is talk a little bit about the things that you told us on the plane. Because uh, you did say some things that were very important that, we, that none of us knew. And if we didn't know until you told us. And I think those that's a very important part of your story. And it's a very important part of the entire story about what happened. And and it's okay, bro, because I feel... Better, uh, organized and organized with a piece of paper. You want to write something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what is, let me ask you this. If you Not write this, just scratch. Uh, to have, having a piece of paper in front of me and up the end uh, helps me out. So. Now, let me ask you this, Chris. We can do it the way Bill's talking about doing it, if that's easier for you. What if I just ask you to explain, tell you, you know, when we got to the house, this is what we saw. Can you tell us how this happened? Would that, would that be something? No, no, that's not how I'm going to tell you. You don't want to do that, okay. No, no, no. Now, how do you want to tell me this story? 
I think that I think that what part do you think? I think what is important is the couple of things that you said that led up to what happened that day. The things that you said when you were talking about how things happened that day and that it wasn't something that you planned in advance, but how it happened and the reason why it happened, the things that you said to him about being pregnant, his response to that.
Rose was our party, our engagement party. Wow. And that day, the day he took us to put in Bay, his brother Paul drove us to to the ferry. The ferry thing over there. Yeah. And they were talking my wedding party. I didn't know it was my wedding party they were talking about. He planned the wedding without you. Yeah. It was bizarre, but um, I was 40 years old. It's like, this is the man that everybody ever dreamed of. Uh, um, if I don't marry him now, I'll probably change his mind. So I was pressured into it. So our wedding day, uh, that was it. We met three times and then we were going to Las Vegas. Wow. Wow. That was, that was quick, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. that was okay. good. That's Vegas. what started everything. We started talking about that and we were all looking at each other just amazed. That was, usually it's the other way around. Usually the women plan it real fast. That's usually the way it happened. No, no. no. Yeah. We put a lot of pressure into me. And uh, the thing is that uh, he didn't pay for a thing. He always forgot his wallet. Always. I paid for all the trips. I, my trip to go to to Ohio from New York. What did you do for a living? I'm an accountant. No. Yes. Um, so I paid for my uh, my mom to bring in all my furniture here. I paid for all the food in the house. I paid for our uh, wedding. I paid for everything in the house. So after we got married, he surprised me. His 16-year-old uh, son that lived in, um, what did I say, North, North Carolina right. with his mother, mm -hmm. he brought his son to live with us. So we got married on June 30th of 2005. Um, and we went to Las Vegas. When I came back, when we, we came back from Las Vegas, his son was in his house. I didn't know him. Living. Okay, so uh, we, 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 I wasn't working. I spent the month of July at home. I wasn't working. In August, he left. He left for a, a course in Texas it was a three to four month uh, course because he worked full time for the Air Force and he decided to, um, and he didn't want to work full time for the Air Force anymore. He went to work for Southwest. Southwest, full time for Southwest, full time, uh, part time for Southwest, part time for the Air Force. He used to, he told me, and he used to make 120000 with the Air Force. I don't know if it's true. I never saw his checkbook. I never saw his bank account. I never had a joint account with this man. I never saw one dollar of this man's money. Never. Never gave me any of his money. Nothing, nothing. I paid all the bills in the house. No, I didn't. He paid the electric and the mortgage. Everything else was with me. Or food, uh, clothing for, for, for him. I bought his clothes. My clothes, his clothes, uh, his son's clothes, everything yeah, going out for dinner, everything else was for me. He put a big for those two. So I remember he told me that with the Air Force, he was going to make, uh, the Air Force, he was going to make 25000 in Southwest, about 40. I think altogether was not more than 65000 Quite a Do you know why? Because he wanted a lifestyle, crazy lifestyle. That's the point of it. I didn't want to expose him. I know, but you, since you talked to me about it, it's something that had you know, you, you're doing good. And Mike is just as nice as Tony, and he works with him here. I think it's important. This is an important part of your story. He wanted a crazy lifestyle of doing all kinds of 
part of the stuff, men, women, everything, everything. And um, for you to have an idea of what lifestyle he liked, he was addicted to a, a TV show called Miles High. You will get up on uh, YouTube. It's about um, Pilot 2. I wasn't even sure it was going to be. I was so pressured to do this. 
at some point I, I figured that I was going to tell him, let's wait. But uh, I wind up doing that, but I felt very, very bad, and I went back to New York. Back to my work, didn't tell any, anything to my boss. I continued to work, and um, two weeks after I was there, he pressured me every day. He said, well, I gave you enough time for you to tell your boss that you're married. If you don't tell her that you're married, I'm going to call her right now, and I'm going to tell her that you married me a couple weeks ago. I said, please, don't do that. Don't do that because I, it, it's just going to hear it. It's going to hear it from me. I want to give her my version. Um, so uh, he, he gave me that day for me to tell my boss. So I walked in to her office and I told her what happened. Um, so then I had no more job.
so that was terrible. Still, and he left it. No money for food, for anything. I had to take his son to, to school every day. I had a child all of a sudden, 16 year old child. I had to take him to school every day. I had to pay for his food. The schools had no jacket. Uh, 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 cold jacket. Nothing. I had to take care of that boy. And, it, and I did. And in the beginning, he didn't like me because he didn't know me. But we only had each other. We became close. Mm -hmm. But um, at some point, he wanted to leave. And Carl started blaming me for his son to want to go back to his um, mother. And I said, no, you're not going to put that blame on me because I have a tape that I record his son telling me that he wasn't going back to uh, to his mother because of me, but because of what Carl did that abandoned him with, with a stranger. And I had a lot of recording about my relationship with, between me and Carl uh, on my hard drive in my computer that was in new forms. The police has that. That shows his character, all the things that he did to me, how he screamed at me, how he cursed at me, how he abused me. That is all in there. Because in my first marriage, that was married before in New York to a doctor for 10 years, Tom, Tom uh, I had a lot of problems with his mother, and I got into the, bed, into the habit of taping conversations. So I, 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 I had, had that habit. So I started taping my conversation with Carl, with, with everybody. No, not with everybody, just Carl and, and, and his son. So that conversation is that hard drive. Um, he, he had a subscription to a site uh, called uh, Hogtide. Do you know what that is? I do. You do. I looked that sign up way back in 2007. You did that to me? You want to explain it? You forced me into, oh my God. Those are the things that he did to me. He forced me to do that. He forced me to play dead. He would only have an orgasm if I played dead. If I move one muscle, he would lose his direction. So, in the beginning, when we were dating, we didn't have full sex because uh, he wouldn't get any direction because he wasn't playing his weird games with me. Remember that he went one time to New York, and I went that to two times to Ohio, so he tried to have sex the first time couldn't because he didn't get any much. Then later on, I started using um, that, um, Viagra. Viagra, right? And, but he didn't tell me. I found that in his little toilet bag. So um, that was the second time. The second time. Very, oh, I remember. He was very nervous with me, and he said, "You're not gonna leave me, right? Because uh, I'm not a man enough for you, right? Because I I couldn't perform." I said, "No, no, I understand. Some, some men get nervous." He said, I, "It's because I had an accident when I when I served in in, in served in." Um, Oh my God, I have cancer. It's very nice that I'm having cancer. 
uh, and he tried to make up a lot of stories uh, why he couldn't perform. But the truth is, he always started doing this hard tie to me after we got married. And I didn't like these games because, like I told you, I'm a very conservative woman. Yes. Right? So, but uh, I went to leave him when he started with that. But then I said, gosh, I already lost my job. I'm starting, you know, accounting for all the stuff that I, that I left in New left. York, that you lost, yeah. that you gave up to move here. I gave up, so yes. So you decided to keep trying. I am going to keep trying. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm too old-fashioned. Maybe I should uh, be more modern. Maybe I'll get used to it. So um, he beat me, and, and next to the bed, police was there. Police could see the bed it was here. Here's the door to the to the, 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 the was, here's the door to the bedroom, and here in this corner, had box with things that he tortured me with ropes. Um, Vibrator uh, had all those gadgets. So, um, and uh, he only had sex that way with me. Either he would tie me up or uh, he would um, um, uh, I would have to play dead or, uh, or he would scratch his penis on my feet until he was bleeding. All weird stuff, and he made me walk around naked in the house on the high hills all the time. It doesn't matter how cold it was, um, you know, because even if you put the heat on, that's uh, dumb. Yeah, it's still it's cold. Those, all strange things. Yeah, you know those uh, uh, high heel things with a pump on, with a little ball. Uh, you seen them on Victoria's Secret? Okay. Those heels with. You know, the, you have a little pond pond, mm -hmm. right? Ridiculous stuff. Pretty, I, I felt like a hug. And it, that's just not me. Right. So I had to, uh, I couldn't put on socks, I couldn't put on uh, pants, I could on, put on uh, a jacket. Um, it went out uh, to, to eat. It was snowing out like this. I always had to wear uh, open shoes, open shoes, open toes, shoes with, you know. So it was torture. He tortured me. He had some fetish shoes, obviously. Yes, yes. Yeah, there is one little shoes. particular one that I, I don't feel comfortable telling you. And you don't have to, okay? There's one very, very bad one. And if you don't have to tell us anything, you're not comfortable telling us. I think at this point, everybody, we have a very good picture that there were some fetish shoes and there were things and it was that or not. There was that, that or, or hell, hell. So yeah. cursing. Uh, uh, he never only beat me up once, but uh, that was the day that, that happened. Yeah, yeah, that was the only time that he beat me up. But he would abuse me verbally.
to spend a weekend or a few days of going them a week. Got a week off for a few days. He he won't let me sleep. And I begged him, I, I can't I, I, I you you're killing me. So he would keep me up and he would stay on bed, sitting on bed. And I would lie down and fall asleep. He would wake me up. Wake up. Wake up. So he would do that all the time. And I got sick. After a few days, my body just couldn't take it anymore. I got sick from the mental pressure, from uh, the, the mental torture, from sleep deprivation. Uh, I wind up in the middle of the night. Uh, I felt pain. And I said, I don't know what this pain is. And all of a sudden, I have blood all over. And then he took me to to a hospital. And I did the ultrasound. And they saw, uh, you are losing the baby. We're going to try to save it, but we don't know if we're going to get to save the baby. But uh, um, just, she did the ultrasound. And said, I don't see the fetus anymore. It, this, the sack is empty. Um, go home and rest, this and that. Uh, but then when I got home, I was the fetus inside the, the toilet. And I, I heard that big much. And I said, what is that? So I saw the blood and I stuck my hand with the fetus. I was very emotional to see this and put inside a, 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 a little uh, glass jar and I showed him he didn't want to see it and, and I put it in the freezer. I said, I'll put it in the freezer because I want to bury it. <laughs> I want to bury the fetus and um, uh, he went into the freezer and, and threw away the fetus. It was so cold. He threw away the fetus. I want to keep it. Uh, whatever, bury it in, in, in the yard. But it, that hurt me a lot because he was, that meant nothing to him. It meant so much to me, it meant nothing to him. And then I went into the hospital to do the, um, to clean up the uterus. Right. So um, uh, I went into surgery. So I don't know the name of the hospital because I'm not familiar with names and I would not remember anyway. It's been 11 years. But uh, I'm sure that my insurance, that was from his insurance, has all that paperwork. They, they could, uh, uh, you could see that my story is true. So, um, uh, so after three or four months, his son went, went back to his mom, and uh, the, our time together became a, a little bit better. I was more used to his abuse, um, but uh, he did a lot of a lot of bad things to me. He, he wasn't allowed to talk. His mother doesn't talk. He just like his mother, uh, a geisha. Geisha. You know what a geisha is? No, I don't. Uh, Japanese. It's a woman that wears that those uh, that, that dress and she serves the men. He wanted me to be like that. Very abusive of his first wife. She left him because of that. Um, and she loved him. Um, we talked with friends. She, she said that to me. She confided that in me. His daughter also confided in me that he was abusive to his mom, to his first wife. And she left him. She was for divorce. And that was the beginning of his depression because he has he he had aspirations of becoming a politician, and he felt that after that he couldn't be a politician anymore because he didn't have the perfect house, the perfect wife. The, so, and then after that he had a, a second wife that was a, a, a Peruvian woman uh, that looked like me. That's why he married me because I looked like his second wife, that um, he left her because she wanted to have children. And he simply took her out of his house and dumped her at the airport. So he ruined this woman's life. She, he got her to leave her job in France. And, uh, and then she could go to he told no, no, I don't know. He, that, those are stories that he told me. So um, I don't remember the name. Uh, um, Carla, Carla. Um, I remember her last 
Um, so uh, he left her because she wanted to have children. Um, uh, he was abused uh, toward women. In general. Oh, he ma uh, yeah. He married this Car Carla, who was broke, didn't speak any English, zero. But she was perfect because all he wanted was a body. He didn't want a, a person for him to talk to. And what he didn't like in me is because I spoke English. He wanted a woman to be like Carla, wife number two, that didn't speak any English and that he could Why did he just keep her then? Because she wanted to have children. And I told him. do with that? Yeah. And I told him that I, I didn't want to have children. He loved them. And I did. But I became pregnant. And that, and becoming pregnant the first time, based on what we talked about earlier, that becomes very important part of the story about what happened. Is that right? That, that becomes a very that's important That's the center part. of That's the center of everything. That becomes a very important part of the story. That's about, the center. So yeah. you understand. Right. Based it's on our conversations early, that, that's it's very important about yes. what happened. And, I, uh, and, and I confined it in, in, our, in my neighbor. Her name is Ella. Ella is the neighbor. She lives in the house across the street. He pregnant this man wants you to avoid. He's now right about that. Bitch, 
very bad words for women, super women, uh, son of a bitch, words that I don't speak. No, the, these words are not part of my vocabulary. Um, I'm conservative, I'm a religious person. Um, so I'm not modern. I, I, I don't like to go out partying. I you know, like to take care of my home and I like to work. I, I always work at least 14 hours a day. Um, and I work always work seven days a week. Um, that wasn't a problem. I worked in the CPA firm right. seven days a week. And I, and I know that when we were talking earlier that when you lost that job, that was, that was, the, that was the most devastating of the world to me. So we had two years ago, oh good. Um, um, I got pregnant a second time about a year later. A year later. So I was 2006. About 2006, I got pregnant again. And again, he did the same thing to me, the same torture, the same torture. And that, uh, that was, that, uh, then, uh, that was a very bad time for me because I started him, because I was wrecking his body, my body, his body, the one to him. I started to gain weight, um, and that wasn't good. Um, gain started, weight as a result of the pregnancy? Depression. Of, of, of losing a, a baby for the second time, okay. I became so depressed. You, you, so you lose the second baby because of the same because the same things were going on as happened the first time a year exactly. prior. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. He depression. thought I was I was uh, purposely trying to get pregnant. I was. I didn't even think I could get pregnant anymore because when oh right, I, right? I didn't think I, I could get pregnant. Um, and um, if you were so concerned about me not getting pregnant, why wouldn't he use a preservative, right? Con right? So he wasn't so I was married, and I didn't see a problem with that. Um, so I, I did, because I didn't get pregnant. It was weird. I didn't get pregnant uh, before him. Uh, but then I, I thought, that was, I think that happened once, that wouldn't happen again because it didn't happen again. Now, like you told us earlier, there's medical records for the first time. Did you go to the doctor the second time? No. Mom? No. Okay, so in 2006, there won't be medical records. In 2005, there should be. There should be. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh, after that, things start spiraling out of control, right? Yeah, but um, we kind of wore... Uh, he was in love, all of a sudden, he was writing me little letters, calling me all the time. Things got better after, I think we got used to each other, the first year, uh, it's not. It's hard, yeah, because you've been date long, so yeah. it, it took a while to get used to each other and get comfortable. Exactly, and his son left, which is the two of us, right. we sort of dating, right? right. Um, then I got pregnant again, and he got very, very angry. I mean, he got upsetting. Are the third time now? No, 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 the second time. And then, um, and then, that was, then uh, uh, he thought he thought I was setting him up. Yes. And is that kind of what he thought the third time? When you, when you the third time no, I, I thought. Oh yeah, he was. He became very psychologically disturbed. Drinking a lot. He was um, uh, not doing well in Southwest. Now, what time frame are we talking about? After August 2006? No, we are back in December of 2006. We're, we're now um, three months before. I was just making sure I understand because I don't want to. I want to make sure that what I remember is, is right. Because these are things that I'm saying now that I didn't. The day, the day that, yeah, the day that everything happened at the house. I'm getting to that. The first time you told me you were pregnant for the third time, is that, is that? Yes, the first time. Okay, so that's, okay, I just wanted to make sure I remember that correctly. That was the first time. Because I was afraid. So, so that would have been more. I sure. was afraid. That I was depressed because I was afraid that his reaction would be the same reaction that which, he had. Which, which, which it was. Which it was. Yes. It, 
was even worse because he, he said he wasn't going to adopt his daughters. Yeah. They, you know what? Can you tell Mike to kind of cover that again? Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. I can't. I can't okay. sit here and tell you what you said, you know what I mean? Yes, I mean, it, it yes. Is, I mean, well, yeah, uh, you wanted me to jump into that part. No, I mean, I just, I just wanted to make sure we were, yeah. I wasn't putting words in your mouth. Okay. Well, uh, uh, that day was a Monday. So, what happened? No, okay, I'll, I'll go into that day. That day was a Monday, and he got home about 9 or 10 minutes. Which day are you talking? I didn't want to tell him over the phone because he worked the he um, he stayed home one day and three days out of the house with the with the south. One day and a half and two days and a half he would fly. So I found out I was pregnant and I got very nervous. So I became depressed. I, I already knew he was not going to accept the pregnancy, so I I had a, a plan. If he doesn't want to accept this pregnancy, I'm going to kill myself because I'm already fat, I lost my job, um, I'm 42 years old, and, 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 and I'm not going to have an abortion. There's nothing that's going to make me have an abortion, and he doesn't want a child. What am I going to do? I'm going to kill myself. So I had a plan to, I'm not going to tell you my plan yet, but let me just get into this pregnancy part. So he got home and I, I, I already had this plan to commit suicide. He doesn't want the, 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 the pregnancy, I'm going to kill myself. Um, and then we talked, he got home and, and I said, um, I had a pregnancy, there's a key inside my pocket, I had a coat. to Brazil and we bought a bottle. I didn't, I never drank before, but 
I thought of that. I said, maybe, maybe I should join to pull myself down. I'll go through something while I have to work. I was anxious before I, uh, while I have to wait for him to finish up the shower. So I start drinking and, and I had a gun. I bought a gun. Um, but now I'm, I'm moving from the No, you're, you're on the right track. You're on the right track because you told me. If I'm, if I'm recalling this correctly, you had bought the name because you were going to try to commit suicide. Yeah, but I didn't tell him that part yet. You didn't do it. So you buy the gun. What do you buy the gun? <laughs> no, let me say um, On Thursday, he got, uh, okay, here's Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday was the day that he died, right? So, I think on Wednesday, I knew I was pregnant. I took the pregnancy. That, that day, I, I, that week, I, I knew I was pregnant. I took the pregnancy test. Maybe it was a few days before that. Um, so, I knew I was pregnant, but I didn't tell him. He was, he was on his trips. Um, the home on Monday. Uh, so, he wanted to... I knew I was pregnant. Um, so, so on I, Wednesday of that week, you find out you're pregnant? Hey, it's either be, between Monday and Thursday, between Monday and Thursday. I that week. Yeah, I, I, I found out I was pregnant. Okay. But I didn't tell him because I was afraid. Um, so I thought, if that man doesn't want me to have this child, I'm going to kill myself. Because uh, I'm not going to have an abortion. So what did I do? Uh, there was a file. There was a file on the uh, internet called uh, the su suicide, uh, suicide, um, the suicide. And you told me you found us uh, on yeah. ways to commit. Yeah, and, and, and the, uh, between the years of. Um, between 2000 and, and, and four or five, it was all over the news that uh, uh, people could get on the internet a file that would tell all kinds of uh, step by step how you could commit suicide. So you were searching the internet for, for possible ways to kill yourself. Yeah, and and that file is even saved on the ha hardware, okay. on the hard drive, hard drive. The hard drive. Okay. Okay. Um, and the the the. The best way of committing suicide was with the gun. But the downside of killing yourself with a gun is that it has a recoil that most people that try to kill themselves, they they, they they lose part of their face, but they don't die because you aim here and the gun will do like that, or like that, and, and you wind up not, not dying. But that's the, the most successful way of killing yourself. And then there's jumping You found a way around that. Right. Well, what, so I, tell me about that. Yeah, then I thought that was, um, because there were other ways, um, poison, jumping off a bridge, uh, of a building, um, uh, um, what do you call it, the heat, the heat, the, 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 the gas, the, the, the stove on, in many ways. Um, so I thought that was a good way because, um, So what I did, but I had a problem. The recoil thing bothered me because if I just uh, get my face ripped off and I don't die, I'm in the worst place, right. right? So what I do, I went to the uh, um, gun, gun, gun uh, store, the gun store, right? gun store, and I, I, I asked for a gun that was small enough for my hands. I wanted it with the laser beam because I wanted to shoot to see what that recoil was. So I, I they, they, they assembled it for me. Do you remember the name of the gun shop or where it was? It was not too far away from Newton from Falls. I said Slug Masters, would that sound about right? Slug or Slugs. Yes, yes. 
So they, they, they helped me to find the right gun for, for my hand, the head, small hands. And I said, um, um, what, what does, uh, explain to me about this blazer um, uh, be. Um, or, or I said, I don't want to buy a laser. So just sell me the whole package. So I bought the whole package, and I went to... Uh, what what do you want the laser beam? Well, I'm going to explain that to you. I went to a uh, 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 fire, firing range, right? right? Because I want to shoot the, to understand if I uh, aim the, at that, that point, how uh, much more above that point you would hit. He so did a little research on this. He, I mean, obviously, he, a lot. he understood that there could be a point where the laser's yes. hitting and the bullet's not hitting in that exact spot. You researched this on the internet? No, no. The beam came from my head. From my head. Okay. That was yeah, obvious. You, you knew that there was a chance that that bullet wouldn't hit exactly. Yeah, where the because beam the article said about the recoil. Right. The article you were reading. The article That's said okay. about the recoil. So uh, I was concerned about the recoil. So I had to understand about the recoil. I said, if I go to a shooting range. When I aim in that point, and if it shoots like uh, one, uh, one, um, one um, inch above or two inches, I will know how much I have to adjust it to lower it to hit where I want. So I did a few, did the, I don't know how much ammunition I bought, but I, I, I was there for like this one hour. And I became very good at it. It's not difficult. Uh, okay. It's not that hard. So I, I, I was hitting the, 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 the target, and I said, well, that's fine. Now, facing the gun that way, it's easy. What about facing the gun sideways? That's totally different. That's not going to work. How are you going to see where the laser's hitting? Did you see a little... Uh, you can do this. How you see where the laser's hitting? No, you, you didn't get it. Yeah, because that's, that's where I was fascinated. That's where I was fascinated when you told me about the, the laser beam is not for killing myself. The laser beam was to understand the recoil. What is recoil? She wanted to say if she pointed the gun. If I pointed it here, okay. it would hit here. I would understand how much I would have. If I want to hit here, actually I have to aim it here. So the laser beam was for me to understand what is recoil, what's the distance. I get what you're saying. Okay. It's not accurate, but I get what you're saying. Makes sense. And, and, and we understand. You can't. Here's what I'll tell you. Because I can tell you this now. You can't control where you boil. Okay? But I only Once, figured that out late after I did it. Okay. She actually told me that. That she figured out that if she couldn't figure it out. We were, we were, I yeah. actually teach you that stuff. That's why I was, right. was going to teach you real quick. Right. So I said, that's not good. I just figured I, I paid to learn that that won't work. Right. That won't work. That will be no good. So what I do? But you found out you were a good shot in the process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm an athlete, so um, I'm good with the sewing. With, I'm very good with my hands, mm -hmm. so I'm good from hands. So that that was that wasn't hard at all. Shooting is not hard, at least not from at a range. So what did I do? I said, yeah, that's very 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 easy to shoot uh, straight, but not sideways. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with my hand. I cannot practice shooting that way. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. So I went home, and my husband had um, um, tools to work with uh, wood. He was an artist, but I, so I went there and I made a piece of wood. So wood with a hole in the middle, and I think that I, I would um, I would screw that to a door frame. I went inside a closet. I did that in his daughter's room. I went inside a closet and I screwed that in, in, in the air. I cut a piece of wood that would be uh, inside the size of the, the opening, right? I screwed that in. You did that all yourself? Yeah. Um, and I got a seat. I said, in the seat. And I measured the hole to be
I don't need an interview. No, I'm smart. You're still a genius. I'm not stupid. Well, Chris, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to sleep better tonight because for the last 11 years, I have been wanting to know exactly what that piece of wood looks like. Oh, my God. Well, that's why I was so excited when I got the call. Yeah, I was excited too. Well, you know, I Let's get back. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this again. We'll talk about we'll it. We'll come back to that, Eric. But now I, can, now I can sleep. <laughs> okay. So my plan was never, not for one single minute, to kill anybody. But my swear to God, there was not for a single minute I thought about that. But that man was stupid enough when he saw me, when he came out of that bedroom, that he saw me. I was drunk. I waited for him for almost here, an hour. Well, while he's in the shower, you're drinking. I'm drinking. He gets out of the shower, comes out of the bedroom, what happens? 